Hello and welcome to the Iceman channel. Today's topic is going to be about high frequency sniffing using the Proxmark. Now I asked long time ago uh, my patrons what they wanted to see in a next in a stretch goal video. And you said we want to see my fur death fire being sniffed. So that's what you're going to get today. Let me hook some things up. You will need a genuine reader. This is an R10. This is also the Red Team Alliance door simulator. It's a perfect one because it has a little display that shows what's there. So if I take my trusty worthy a Desfi EV2 card with an encoded with an HID SIO presented to the reader, you will see that those two matches meaning the reader understands everything. Now, what more do you need? Well, let me just take quickly about sniffing. You can either sniff by putting Proxmark reader, it's always in the bottom, let's, let's assume it is in the bottom. Uh, reader Proxmark card, or you take card reader Proxmark, or reader card. I tend to use uh, putting the card like this and put it like this. Sometimes I do this and put it like this. So this is a little bit how you just hold it. You have to, it's an art. Sniffing is an art. You have to try over and over and over again. But I will put on the card here and then I will pop over to the Proxmark client. Uh, when you start sniffing, you need to know and understand what protocol you're sniffing, and it's not Desfi we're, pro uh, we're sniffing. We are sniffing 14A, meaning we have to go into 14A. There is a little command called sniff, and I will show you the help text. Of course, there's two parameters that you always would call it with. This means that the Proxmark will start sniffing, turn on the sniffing, when it changes a field uh, communication between a reader or card. Uh, otherwise, their internal RAM will be eaten up and you will it will be lonely managed to capture about one and a half seconds of traffic which is kind of fast anyway over there but uh, it's not long enough so if you put it on it's like oh presenting it takes too long time so with this you don't have to care i put the card up there and um keep the proxmo card until i hear the beep i press the button and i look what kind of trace do we get we seem to have got a good trace uh, I will first save this trace. No, I will not trace. I will actually do HFMF HF, HF, des list to see what kind of trace we got. And this looks like an okay trace. Now the question is, why is it look like a good trace? Well, let me tell you that. It's a good question. First of all, it's green here. Green and it says okay. It means that all this traffic you got here between the read and card is captured and the CSC that we got is true, meaning we got a good capture. Second role, if you see, it says reader tag, reader tag, reader tag. And if you fail to do reader capturing, you only see readers or you see only tags and that's something bad. Like up here, it didn't see any cards, but we saw the reader capture, right? So this is a good trace. Now for safety measures, I tend to just you know, save this file uh, so I can go back to this trace whenever I want to. HFMFDS uh, sniff HIO um, CO um, and then that's it. So now I have a copy of this trace so I can always go back to. What is this then when we look at it? This here is a normal selection and end collision not very interesting. You come down here and it starts to look a little bit different uh, around there. This is what the interesting part is, what the reader does. First of all, if you look at this, you see it says 0A or 0B, 0A, 0B. But it's going to be 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 3. It's a bit indicating field. This is for APDUs. So ignore this byte. It's just a good measure that it works. This here is the CID. Card ID that's used for this um, this layer of uh, ISO 14A. You can ignore as well. 
So first here starts the interesting data. Now this is interesting because we have no annotation for this one and I'm pretty sure this is a select uh, which is not identified. And then we have 90. So this, <laughs> this is a tag response, you can ignore those two bytes and here comes the APDU positive uh, acknowledgement, 90 back, 19, what are you called? So that's it. Next thing we really does is to do a select application called 40F, boom, and the card says 91A0. And that's a negative uh, response. It's positive in one way, it accepts that you talk to me correctly, but I'm looking for some. I have, don't have this in mind, what A0 means. It goes over, tries the next one, and you get a positive 9100. Great. Now it starts to authenticate. You can see it all the way down there. And then after that, the reader tries to uh, get file settings for the file 0F. It knows which file setting it wants to look at, and it gets that back there. And then here, it tries to read data from the file 0F. Going back to this line here, the tag response says, ignore this, ignore this, and here starts five bytes of data, that it says. Now, what is this then? Four bytes, and here we have two bytes that we can ignore on those two CRC bytes. We ignore those because we know what those are, but what are these four bytes? Well, since this is in plain text, we can talk about the three different ways that uh, Desify can operate. You can have it in plain text operations, you have a plain text Mac, uh, where the tags on a Mac and bytes to it, uh, and then you have encrypted with Mac, signed. So it's a signed uh, communications. Let's figure out where to focus. My guess is straight off the bat is that this is a signed uh, communication error. It reads five bytes and then it reads the same byte again, but it reads 49 bytes. And if you skip the two first, then we go to 30 here and all the way, way down to 9100, that's good. And we most likely can remove the four last bytes because that's the Mac. And this is to me, which starts with 30 and ends with 0500. This is an SIO object. After that, it goes back and tries to read the app and master application 000. And that's it. Nothing else happens. Cool. So I have saved this trace just in case. Now we can look into what is this? We have some things to look into. First of all, what is these? What are these app APIs? Desfire has something called applications. The best thing I can call it is folders where you have files inside. So they have applications and then they're also called app IDs in order to you know, address those names. It's a little bit complicated there as well, but ignore it. But to look these ones up, we have a file. I have to exit the Proxmark directory and client and use my trusty rip grep command. See, hello, that's a wrong paste. Sorry about that. Uh, I need to mark this one. Copy report. I want to see some data next to it. And it's in client resources AID Desify JSON. It tells us that this uh, application ID is belongs to HID and it's an SIO and it's comes from a field encoder. Cool. If we look at the next one, the only thing of a difference is that it starts with a five. So if we just go over here and change to a five, we see that is HID, country, access control, HID factory. If you ever used the Azure ID, you would immediately recognize these two things as the field encoder and the factory encoder. It's two IDs that's used. Uh, they have another layer called ADFs and GDFs up top of this, how they look at things. But from the Desify perspective, that's it. Uh, let's jump back into the Proxmark. And we go back up here and look what the hell is this. What more can we do? Well, we have an authentication here. Uh, we can actually extract those uh, data. And there's a command called trace extract uh, if you run it from the trace list and it takes out the data that was used for it 
There was some German researchers founding that the perk system in Germany used Linux or Unix timestamps as the base for developing uh, derivating the keys used for the desfire credentials. So uh, they made a brute force of it. Kind of interesting attack. We have extracted the data, you can use it. You can use your own brute force to it in that sense, but HLE doesn't use that, so it doesn't matter. But it's good to have, to know that you can do that. So we talked about this. File settings, okay, great, and read data. Let's see what we actually can do ourselves. Um, if, let's see, I'm, I'm just gonna go this here. Right? If I take this data here, and if I remove all the spaces for it, because I have to do that, so I'm gonna cut something else there. Um, we, I know that this data is in a format called ASN1. We have a command for that in Proxmag as well. So if we do this, we can actually decode that data in the sense that it was. 78, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and knowing that this is the secure identity object and this whole string in ASN format, this part here is, to my opinion, uh, the PAX data encoded or encrypted. Most likely the four last bytes is used in some kind of Mac as well or signature or signing. So this here is the data there. Um, layers upon layers upon layers and when it comes to HID and their uh, SIOs. Great. So we can decompose this from the SNP as well. Um, and we extract the key formats there. Cool. Um, let's have a look at the tag itself now that we have it. I will remove a reader from the Proxmoc vicinity because the reader field is quite strong and I don't want any interference. Let's run. Desfire. Proven to be a Desfire 2 card. You know that, so there's nothing interesting here. It says it has one application, and the name of that application we is here. All right, that matches up our understanding of this, why this failed and this worked, All right? Great. Now what? Well, we have something called MFDES, uh, MFDES LS apps. And if you just run that one, it will complain. You can have a little trick. If you go for no off, sometimes this works tell to don't authenticate because we didn't see an authentication before it does things so we can read this out we see a little bit more about you know application that's there there's an ASO name but since HD doesn't use that it doesn't matter this data here comes from the text files we looked before and you recognize this one there see what kind of methods of authentication it supports it has four keys great now what the application is a there is like a folder. Do this. Is there any way to look at the files? They are. We have a command called ls files. I will just end like this so you see it. You will have to add an AID that will be this one or this one. Uh, like everything else, we have to tack on no off in that sense to see if we get lucky, which we got. The file ID here, this is file ID 0f, matches into what we saw in the trace, the file ID here and the file ID there. There's one file what we see in this one, in this AID. It's a standard data file. The node, as I said, could be in plain, Mac, and encrypted communication mode. Oh, it likes an I there. Look, communication. That's wrong. Hmm, spelling which matches the idea that we saw those four strange bytes up there. This is a Mac communication. You still see it in, in open, so that's why it's kind of cool. Here's read, access writes, read, write, read, write, and change key one, key two, key zero, key three, four keys, four keys up there. And, and we don't have any keys like that, so we can't see and read this data if we try to, if you wanted to read the, this file. See the size of this is 56, but the only read it is 49 in the data here. So we didn't read the complete file up there. That's interesting as well. 
And that's it. Uh, that's as much as you can deduct from one sniffing a uh, M F or my fair NXP test fire car with a proc mod. I hope you enjoyed it.